Did you know? Nintendo may have originally planned to name the GameCube the StarCube. Nintendo of America submitted three separate trademarks for StarCube in 1999, and the name was even posted on the official Nintendo website for Sweden. However, Nintendo's American and Japanese officers denied any knowledge of the name. According to the Swedish site, the system's online network would have also been named Star Road, referencing an area of the same name in Super Mario World. Nintendo veteran Shigeru Miyamoto pushed for the console to keep its project name, and simply just be called Dolphin. Despite his efforts, Miyamoto failed to gather support for this idea. Choosing the name, GameCube, and designing the system's logo was a collaborative effort between Nintendo's Japanese headquarters and Nintendo of America. This was to make sure the console's name and appearance would work internationally. Strangely, the GameCube is abbreviated as GCN in the West, even though it's abbreviated as NGC in Japan for Nintendo GameCube. This is likely because the abbreviation Aviation NGC is a trademark of the National Geographic Channel in the United States, and is generally associated with National Geographic. The channel even files trademarks under the company NGC Network US when registering new shows. Another possibility for the difference between regions is that NGC was close to the abbreviation for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, NGPC, and Nintendo wanted to avoid any confusion or association. When making the GameCube, Nintendo wanted to create a system that looked like the ultimate gaming console console, and not just another entertainment device that sat on a shelf. Several early designs were flatter than the GameCube, and one design even looked like a UFO. These designs kept leading to dead ends, however, so Nintendo looked at how gamers actually interacted with their consoles. Research at the time showed that Japanese families preferred smaller electronics in their household, and this data influenced Nintendo's designs. Most families had multiple TVs at home, and Nintendo wanted the system to be easy to take from room to room, or even to a friend's house. They decided to make the system compact and easy to hold to fulfill these needs. This is also why the system has a handle on its back. Although the GameCube's design had a mixed reception, its controller is often praised. The GameCube controller went through the most revisions of any Nintendo controller before it. The controller took three years to develop and was updated on a monthly basis. At one point, the B button was kidney-shaped, like the X and Y buttons, and there was even a prototype controller that lacked a D-pad. While designing the controller, Miyamoto wanted to focus on the recognition of the joypad's main button, and making sure the player immediately knew which button was most important for playing games. The controller was also designed to have different distinct shapes for each button. This was so that players could know which button they were touching without having to look at the controller. In 2008, Nintendo almost faced a ban that would stop them from selling GameCube, WaveBird, and Wii Classic controllers. Nintendo lost a case that appealed against a $21 million patent in infringing lawsuit from a Texas-based company called Anascape. The patent seemed to be a generic patent relating to video game controllers and the application of analog controls, which Nintendo questioned the validity of. Because Nintendo lost the case, they were told that they would no longer be able to sell their controllers. However, they were allowed to continue selling their products while they took the case to the US Court of Appeals. The appeals court ultimately sided with Nintendo, and the company were free to continue producing and selling controllers. Nintendo had to deal with legal affairs of another kind early in the GameCube's life. Shortly before the console's release, Microsoft offered to buy Nintendo for $25 billion. Nintendo of America's then-president, Minoru Arakawa, originally thought the offer was a joke. But once Microsoft's intentions were clear, Nintendo took the offer seriously and discussed the deal in Japan over six or seven meetings. Microsoft wanted Nintendo to drop its console business and make games for the Xbox. But Nintendo's CEO at the time, Hiroshi Yamaha, Mauchi didn't like the idea, and believed Microsoft lacked an understanding of the industry. Any chances of Microsoft's offer being taken died before the release of the GameCube. Although Nintendo turned down Microsoft's offer, they did forge business relationships with other gaming companies. After the GameCube's release, Nintendo and Sega teamed up to bring Fantasy Star Online Episodes 1 and 2 to the GameCube, complete with online play. However, their partnership led to some unintended damages. In October 2003, it was discovered that, when used with Fantasy Star Online, the GameCube's broadband adapter could channel unauthorized programs and code to the GameCube. This included 
retail GameCube games copied onto a computer, which opened the doors for piracy. Hackers found that when playing Fantasy Star Online, they could change some of the connection settings and access locations on their own computer instead of the game's official servers. This allowed them to stream their own code directly onto the GameCube. In response to this, Sega released an updated version of the game that fixed the exploit, and made much of the game's online content available offline. Beyond online connectivity, Nintendo put an emphasis on Game Boy Advance connectivity while developing the GameCube. One game that would demonstrate the possibilities of GameCube and Game Boy Advance interaction was Stage Debut. Stage Debut was planned to work in sync with the Game Boy Advance's Game Eye add-on. The Game Eye was a camera which would allow people to take pictures, and overlay these images on 3D models in Stage Debut. Although both Stage Debut and the Game Eye add-on were cancelled, the game inspired the creation of Nintendo's Mii characters. Another unusual set of GameCube add-ons released exclusively in Japan. The game Ohenro-san Hoshin no Dojo came with an optional mat and pedometer. Ohenro-san was a literal walking simulator, and was made specifically for the elderly. The player could stand on a mat add-on and walk on the spot, causing the in-game images to progress in a Google Street View style fashion. Using the pedometer, players could also walk outside, then download its step count to the game to progress. Gamers would walk the grounds of 23 Japanese temples in the game. This was a sample of the 88 temples associated with the real-life Shikoku pilgrimage. As well as unusual add-ons, there was an entire GameCube console that wasn't produced by Nintendo. While developing the GameCube, Nintendo licensed the system's gaming tech to Matsushita, the company which owns Panasonic. This was part of a deal struck while Matsushita produced the optical disc technology for the GameCube. Because of this collaboration, Nintendo sanctioned Matsushita's development of the Panasonic Q. The Q was a Panasonic-branded GameCube capable of playing DVD movies. And although there was interest behind the idea of a DVD-compatible GameCube, the Q sold poorly and was discontinued in 2003. Due to the Q having a different shape to the GameCube, as well as legs on its base, the original Game Boy player couldn't be attached to it. Enough Panasonic Q owners complained about the incompatibility that Nintendo actually partnered with Matsushita to create a Game Boy player specifically for the Q. There was yet another device capable of playing Game Boy Advance games made for the GameCube. Dattel made a third-party Game Boy player rival called the Advance Game Port. The device is largely seen as inferior to the Game Boy player, as many games have audio and video issues. However, the Game Port did have a built-in action replay feature for cheats, as well as a save slot feature for saving anywhere. Did you also know that the Game Boy Advance was originally going to be about the size of the original Game Boy, and release in the mid-90s? Or that a private add-on let people play Game Boy Advance games on a Nintendo 64? For more Game Boy Advance facts, check out our video on the handheld. And if you want more Nintendo facts, watch our video on how Rare wanted Amiibo-style toys for the Nintendo 64. Thank you very much.